ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونتوب اليه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد الحمد لله رب العالمين والشكر لله we praise Allah Azza wa Jal we glorify his name Azza wa Jal we ask him to send blessings and salutations and peace upon the best of creation our master Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his family and followers and folk companions and folk until the end of time Allah be pleased with them all Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen that Allah Ta'ala has honored us to be in the Ummah of the Final Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that He has honored us to be in the Ummah of the best of all Prophets and Messengers Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Alayhi Wasallam Ajma'een and He has honored us therefore to be the best of Ummah, the best of communities if we rise and receive the Sunnah in, to the best of our abilities Insha'Allah and so we celebrate these blessings. We celebrate the Kitab of Allah. We celebrate the Nubuwa of our Prophet We celebrate the honor of being in this Ummah. This is the state of the heart of the believer is celebration, which is one of the meanings of Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, all praise be to Allah, is the celebration and the gratitude in the heart for the honor and the sharaf and the karam to be designated in this special community, to have the light of faith, the light of Tawheed, of monotheism in the heart, the light of La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that to cultivate this light, to invest in this light, to uh, take on the practices of Islam uh, in a steady, consistent manner, always seeking to increase slowly but steadily, in order to magnify and augment this light to deepen our faith. Imam al-Ghazali, rahimahullah, if you read his autobiography, Al-Muntib min al-Dalal, The Deliverer from Error, is that he describes how he had a phase in his life where he was afflicted with a type of radical skepticism. A type of radical skepticism that today is sort of normal and ubiquitous we're questioning everything, even questioning one's senses, the uh, sense data, what one <coughs> learns from one's five senses, questioning first principles, axiomatic knowledge. And he was, he describes how he was confused for uh, a few months, even though he held on to faith, but deep down he had this confusion. And that ultimately Allah Ta'ala cured it by the grace of Allah and in the words of Al-Ghazali Rahimullah is that he has, he says there's no way really to describe it except that Allah cast a light into my heart. Allah cast a light into my heart and he had clarity of first principles, clarity of how we learn and therefore clarity of the implications of our knowledge when we learn of the world, when we examine the world, reflect on the world, we cannot help but rationally arrive at the necessary existence of Allah and the nubu of the Prophet and that he later in his book he says that the true way of cultivating and augmenting this light is to practice the sunnah of the Prophet rational arguments have their place and we have to have scholars that are able to articulate, articulate demonstrations of the verities of faith and the principles, the tenets of our aqidah. But the true way for the believer to personally realize the reality of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah is to simply start 
And Al-Ghazali says that there will be dhawq, the person will start to taste the reality of Nubu'a, the person will start to see and sense and recognize the trueness of our Prophet Wasallam in a way that arguments can't really express. Even though arguments can point us towards truth, they cannot really and allow us to enter into the palace of light and truth. And so, if we even reflect on the uh, du'as of the Prophet we will see nubuwa. The du'as of the Prophet are in a way, you know, loudly proclaiming his true prophethood. Is the way he knew Allah and the way he expressed his knowledge of Allah and his devotion of Allah through his very supplication, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One cannot read the hadith of the different adhkar, an, an important book that all of us should have in our libraries, particularly for our young ones, but for the elders, all of us alike, is Kitab al-Adhkar of Imam al-Nawawi, rahimahullah. The Book of Remembrances, which has now been translated into English. This is highly recommended reading. And if we read these forms of supplication of the Prophet Wasallam and the different ways he, re he made remembrance of Allah, Azzawajal, it's obvious and self-evident that his, his trueness as a Prophet Wasallam, let alone if we study the Qur'an and the Hadith generally. But if we reflect on, for example, one of his, Imam al Nawawi says, if you look at the different du'as of opening the prayer, and you combine them, take the different narrations, he mentions one lengthy one, he says that the Prophet ﷺ would often begin with, Allahu Akbar kabira, walhamdulillahi kathira, wa subhanallahi bukratan wa asila, wa jahtu wajhiya lindadhi fatara samawati wal ard, hanifan musliman, wa ma'ana min mushrikeen, inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen, la sharika la, wa bithalika umirtu wa ana min muslimin, Allahumma anta al-malik, la ilaha illa ant, anta rabbi wa ana abduk. Ghanamtu nafsi wa a'taraftu bidhanbi, faghfir li dhunubi jami'an, fa innahu la yaghfir dhunuba illa ant. Wahdini li ahsan al-akhlaq, fa innahu la yahdi li ahsaniha illa ant. Wasrif anni sayyi'aha, fa innahu la yasrifu anni sayyi'aha illa ant. لبيك وسعديك والخير كله في يديك والشر ليس إليك أنا بك وإليك تباركت وتعاليت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك سبحان الله صلى الله عليه وسلم This is light emanating from our blessed prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم Even if someone doesn't understand the meanings one can sense the beauty and the light of these prophetic words literally prophetic words but it, these are vehicles expressing the light of His Blessed Heart وسلم, Something of that unimaginable light وسلم. As we know Allah Ta'ala says قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ نُورٌ وَكِتَابٌ مُبِينٌ There has come to you from Allah a great light and a clear book. The clear book is the Qur'an. What is this great light? قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ نُورٌ The indefinite expresses something that cannot be contained. It's as if it's you know, you can't, you can't even contain it, so it's nurun, indefinite. A tamkir li ta'adim in Almul Baragha. The indefinite for something tremendous and, and, and magnificent that, that, that it's hard to limit. Nurun, Imam al Qurtubi, Imam al Tabari, Imam al Suyuti, Imam Fakhirin al Razi, Imam al Baghawi, all these great Mufassirin, exegetes of the Quran, they say Nur here, Sayyidina Muhammad is our Prophet. And so, something of this light being expressed in the vehicles of these prophetic words. What does he say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, beginning the prayer? Allahu Akbar Kabira, Allah is greater. Magnificently, unimaginably greater. Kabira, again, indefinite. Kabira, Kabira. That whatever might occur to our minds, Allah is superior. Whatever we might think of how we understand Allah, Allah is still far greater. Whatever the human beings might ascertain of divinity, Allah far transcends that, Azza wa Jal. Allah is always greater. Whatever blessings we find in our life, Allah is greater. Whatever difficulties and hardships we might, we might be facing right now, Allah is greater. Allah is greater. In other words, behind the yakun is the kun. Behind the occurrence in our life is the kun, the ontic, ontological statement of existentiation, kun. 
And so the one who created it is the one that can solve it. Allahu Akbar Kabira, Walhamdulillahi Kathira. And therefore, plentiful, plentiful, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, this sublime phrase that every single praise belongs to Allah. Every single glory belongs to Allah. Every single greatness belongs to Allah and Allah alone. The lamb, the milk, will istihqaq. It is. It belongs to Him, and He alone deserves it. Azza wa Jal. He alone deserves it. Azza wa Jal. What is the name Allah? Our theologians say the name Allah is alamun li adat al wajib al wujud al mustahik li jami' al mahalidi. Is that the name Allah is the proper name that re that refers to the necessarily existent Azza wa Jal, who deserves every single praise. Alhamdulillah. All of the Fatiha can be summated in the first verse, Alhamdulillah. The Prophet said, Afdul dua Alhamdulillah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Afdul dhikri La ilaha illallah, the best remembrance is La ilaha illallah. Wa Afdul dua Alhamdulillah, and the best supplication is Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And so, Alhamdulillah, Kathira. The Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, read the seerah, look at the difficulties he faced, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Buried six of his seven children, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Driven out of his beloved home, Mecca, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for no wrong committed, but every right that he gave them, every light that he brought, driven out of his beloved, home, beloved uh, his, 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 the home that was beloved to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Trial after trial, tribulation after tribulation, the, the, third, the ten years of persecution in Mecca, seeing his blessed companions being persecuted and killed, again, for bringing light and monotheism to, to a, a place plagued with idolatry. Two years, two and a half years of sanctions, due to which not only the difficulty of those sanctions, the, the, the trauma of hunger, sustained hunger for so long, but due to which his beloved, beloved wife Khadija, Allah be pleased with her, passes away, and the uncle that he loves so much, Abu Talib, passes away. And then, episode after episode in the seerah, the entire time, what's the state of the Prophet ﷺ? In the very opening of the prayer before the Fatiha that has Alhamdulillah, Walhamdulillah kathira, and plentiful, plentiful thanks to Allah. And he's SubhanAllah, a true Prophet, Sadiq Masduq ﷺ. It's clear and evident. Read the seerah and ask yourself at every event, what, what, how could an imposter act this way? How could an imposter act this way? Only a true prophet could act this way. Sallallahu alayhi wa And our young people need to read the seerah critically and reflect and with reflection and deliberation so that they, they have the conviction in their own hearts. Don't wish, you know, taqlid in aqidah is blameworthy. Our belief is not based on the belief of our family, the belief of our uncles, the belief of our culture. No, our, the belief of every individual believer is based on their own individual conviction. And so we have to come to recognize the trueness of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we need to cultivate communities, and mashallah this is one of the, our blessed communities, that facilitates, again, augmenting this light and augmenting the certitude that we have in these ver eternal verities of faith. But, alhamdulillah kathira wa subhanallahi bukrata wa asila and how glorious is Allah morning and evening. And the Prophet وسلم, giving us medicine for the mornings and evenings, all the different azkar in the morning and the evening. Raditu billahi rabba wa bil islami deena wa bi Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa nabi wa rasula. I'm content with Allah as my Lord and with Islam as my religion and with. Sayyidina Muhammad as my Prophet Sallallahu With the name of Allah, the one that with his name nothing in the heaven or earth can harm. And he is all hearing and all knowing. I seek refuge in the Kalimatillahi Tamma, these perfect words of God. These complete and perfect words of God from the evil that he has created. In other words, when we are met with harm in the world, we go to the perfect words of Allah as a protection from that harm. What are the perfect words of Allah? One tafsir is the kitab of Allah, the Qur'an, kalamullah, the, the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is one meaning. So we return to the Qur'an, with the, which is shifa, which is a healing, when we face tribulation. Another meaning, according to some scholars, is the kun behind the yakun. Because it's by the ontic statement of Allah, kun, that the occurrence happened in the first place. 
And so if we, instead of stopping at the occurrence that might be, that the tribulation that unfolds in our life, we seek refuge in the existentiation of that occurrence. In other words, recognizing it's the statement of Kun behind it. And so going to the Creator, seeking protection from the harm of the creation. A'udhu bi kalimatillahi tamma. And these are perfect words of Allah, the Kun. Because every Kun is a manifestation of one of the names of Allah. Every Kun is a manifestation of one of the names of Allah. And so by going to the named, when we see a manifestation of one of his names, Azza wa Jal. Subhanallah, Bukratan wa Asila, the prophetic medicine in the morning and the evening, they all allow our hearts to sing, Subhanallah, how glorious is Allah, how marvelous is the Divine, Azza wa Jal. And he continues, Wajjahtu Wajhiya, you know, I devote my entire being. The Wajh, which is the countenance, refers to the being itself. And so we devote our beings to the capital B being, the pure being of Allah. Dhatullah, the eternal, Al-Qadim, Azza wa Jal. Wajjahtu Wajhiya lilladhi fatara samawati wa the one that created the heavens and earth. In the schools today, this, this, cle- this splitting of, cre- of the creative act of the heavens and earth is called the Big Bang. But we have to ask what caused the Big Bang because every occurrence necessarily has a cause. This is the causal principle. This is in daruri. It's a necessary axiomatic fact. It's a first principle that every occurrence must have a cause. And all of science is based on ascertaining causes. And so how ironic for scientists to always seek the cause of things except when they get to the first thing. Then they say, well, we'll stop there. It's a bit prejudice, isn't it? What's the cause of the, what's called the Big Bang? Kun fayakun. It's only, only the necessarily existent can rationally explain the possibly existent. Only the eternally existent can rationally explain the temporally existent. Only Allah Azza wa Jal can be the rational explanation of the kaun. Al-Akwan thabitatun bi ithbatihi. These are established principles of our metaphysics. Ibn Atala says, Al-Akwan thabitatun bi ithbatihi. The created order, the universe, all the realms of the created order, what however many universes are out there, Al-Akwanu thabitatun. They are real bi ithbatihi because he has actualized them, Azza wa Jal. He has actualized them, Azza wa Jal. And so, Wajjah to Wajjah, doesn't it make sense then to devote ourselves to our Creator and Sustainer? Because it wasn't just the Big Bang, but every moment, Allah is sustaining us. At every moment, Allah is sustaining us, Azza wa Jal. At any one moment, if you go back to what's, what's the cause of this and what's the cause of this, even in one moment, it can't be an infinite regress. It has to end somewhere. Where does it end? The necessarily existent. So whether we go back in time or in one frame of time, upwards in the series of causes, it has to end at the necessarily existent. Azza wa Jal. Kun fayakun. Subhanallah. And so doesn't it... أَنْعَمَ عَلَيْكَ أَوَّلًا بِالْإِجَادِ وَثَانِيًا بِتَوَالِي الْإِمْدَادِ He blessed you first by existentiating you, by giving you existence in the first place. There was a time where we didn't exist and now we exist, alhamdulillah. But then... Each moment with وَثَانِيًا بِتَوَالِ الْإِمْدَادِ And then secondarily, subsequently, by continuously maintaining our existence. In and of ourselves, we, we can't last. Allah Ta'ala apprises all of humanity of this. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ أَنْتُمَ الْفُقَرَاءُ إِلَى اللَّهِ Clear, explicit in the Qur'an. O oh, people, O oh, humanity, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ أَنْتُمَ الْفُقَرَاءُ إِلَى اللَّهِ All of you are in need of Allah. Wallahu huwa al-ghaniyu al-hamid. But Allah alone is the one without need and therefore deserving of all praise. Alhamdulillah kathira. Subhanallah bukratan ma'asila. Wajjahtu wajhiya lilladhi fatara as-samawati wal I devote my entire being to the one that cleaved open and existentiated the heavens and the earth. Hanifan, always inclining back to him. Musliman, as a Muslim, as a follower of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
And I will not fall into ascribing power to other than Allah. I will not fall into ascribing power to other than Allah. Inna salati, my prayer. Wa nusuki, my uh, the religious rights. All of the religious rights. Wa mahyaya wa mamati, my very life and my very death. Lillahi rabbil alamin. They belong to, therefore, Allah. The, the, the Lord and sustainer of the universe. Again, وَثَانِيًا بِتَوَالِي الْإِمْدَادِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسْكِي وَمَحْيَايِ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَا No one co-shares with Allah in His eternality, in His power, in His, in his omnipotence, in His decision. إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسْكِي وَمَحْيَايِ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَا and I am amongst the Muslims. I am in the Ummah of the Prophet Allahumma antil malik. Oh Allah, you are the king. La ilaha illa ant. There is no deity but you. Anta rabbi wa ana abduk. Anta rabbi wa ana abduk. You are my Lord and I am your servant. If you give me blessings, alhamdulillah, it's your right because I'm a servant. If you test me today, Alhamdulillah, it's your right because I'm your servant. But I turn to you begging for uh, relief. I turn to you begging for afia. I turn to you begging for well-being, but I recognize your rububiyah. It's your lordship. You have every right. Anta Rabbi wa ana abduk. The Prophet ﷺ, whatever happened to him in the Blessed Sira, Anta Rabbi wa ana abduk. ظلمت نفسي. I I wronged myself. واعترفت بذنبي. And I and I admit my sin. I admit my wrong. He's teaching us to make tawbah. صلى الله عليه وسلم. فاغفر لي ذنوبي جميعا. And so forgive all of my sins. فلا يغفر الذنوب إلا أنت. أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفر الله. إن الله تقول رحيم. And so making tawbah to Allah. And then asking Allah for help to do good. Guide me to the most beautiful of virtues. Because no one can guide me to beautiful virtue except you. And turn away from me from turn away from me wrong vices, wrongs. Because no one can turn diseases of the heart away from me except for you. Ever returning at your service, O oh Allah. Ever returning to support you, O oh Allah. To support your religion, O oh Allah. To support the Sunnah of the Prophet, O oh Allah. Every good is in your possession. Every single good is in the possession of Allah. And, but evil does not return to Him. Where does evil return to? The human agent, the human or jinn moral agent that chose to do wrong, that chose to relinquish the gift of free will into something foul and vile. Any good belongs to Allah, alhamdulillah, but evil does not return to Him. وَالشَّرُ لَيْسَ إِلَيْكَ تَبَارَكْتَ وَتَعَأَنَا بِكَ وَإِلَيْكَ I am through you and to you. The Prophet ﷺ expressing all of metaphysics in this shortest of statements. This is his nubuwa. Ana bika wa ilayk. I am through you and to you. Because who's maintaining us at every moment? Allah. And who do we return to at every moment and in the final abode? Allah. Tabarakta wa ta'alayk. How full of barakah, how much blessing is with you, O Allah. And how glorious, sublime wa ta'alayk. Astaghfiruka wa I, I, I turn to you in forgiveness. Tawbah is the sign that Allah loves the servant. And so we ask Allah Ta'ala to make us people of Tawbah, mm -hmm. to make us people who turn to Him in these prophetic meanings, the deepest of meanings that express our metaphysics, that express our ethics, that express our creed, that express the reality, something of the reality of the prophetic light, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We ask Allah Ta'ala to fill our hearts with this light. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make us people of sincerity, of taqwa and Tawbah. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make us people of deep-rooted conviction that when we read the Kitab and the Sunnah, we can recognize 
recognize the trueness of La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, and that that light shines out to all the people around us. Allahumma inna nasalika al-akhwa al-afiyah, wal mu'afatam, wal mu'afatam fi dunya wal akhira, rabbina atina min ladunka rahmatan wa hiyya lana min amrina rashada, Allahumma inna nasalika al-tawfiq wal ikhlas wa dawam al ni'ma wa husn al-khitab, inna allaha wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi, ya ayuhal ladina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima, Allahumma salli wa sallimu barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad, al-nabi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallimu, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa aqimu s-salam.